Yeah, I, I, I have an art background, and, and then that led to a sort of teaching art um, in secondary schools, um, primary schools, and some museum spaces. And, um, you know, my background is very much painting and drawing, you know, very non-technical, but my students kind of led me to computer labs and um, graphics and things like that because they were really energized by, by what they were doing outside of school. Um, and that's continued to sort of fuel a lot of my interest in this area because I think a lot of the research, especially in the DML, has this sort of this character of looking at what students and young people are doing outside of schools as being really important. And in my practice, my experience, and in my field, quite frankly, um, we're seeing a lot of that as being so vital. Um, and so it's kind of like the learning that's in non-school spaces can really help us to understand better and be more effective in schools as well. And so we, in art education, we take that quite seriously. And uh, my master's degree was looking at creating websites back in you know, 2001 and um, now looking at uh, taking a really, really close look at some design software that's very, very common in my field and trying to really understand it um, in a network framework versus as just like a tool that you use to be creative. Um, it has really changed a lot of my perspectives. So. I, I'm starting a, a, a position at SUNY New Paltz, and so my, you know, obviously my immediate future is getting myself in that program, understanding their teacher preparation um, for um, you know, undergraduates who are looking to be art teachers certified by the state. And so one of the things that I'm really, really, I think what, they, what they're excited about me bringing to the table in that department is this aspect of technology, um, is the aspect of bringing sort of this, this sense of a network public, not just isolated software that you use to make art, right? So it's more of this sort of expansive sense of, um, you know, this framing of a participatory culture in an art classroom. And what does that look like? And um, how do we reinvigorate um, those components, uh, I think, in the, in the teacher preparation process so that they not only become sort of um, equipped but then they also have a more, a, a broader, a deeper understanding of what their students are involved with inside and outside of their classrooms. And there's another sort of component here that's um, certainly been a part of my work uh, in, in terms of community outreach and involving sort of um, digital visual practices and community sort of storytelling and sense of identity and sort of a really action research-based component. Um, it's not what my dissertation focuses on, but it's certainly been a part of my work and a part of my concerns and a part of the places where I, I you know, commit my blood, sweat, and tears as I've sort of gone through the process of, of both in school and the academic components, but also just what I'm invested in. Um, so there's, I think there's a lot of really dynamic. Uh, I'm very interested in how arts, arts-based community practices might overlap with hacker spaces um, how both of those sort of combinations might also be able to attend to some of the disparities that we see that are, that are absolutely associated in, in socioeconomic frameworks. Um, that stuff, is, I think, is, is really rich with potential and reaching out to um, urban youth in particular, I think, is something I'd be really interested in. Again, I think it was the opportunity to have a, um, a dialogue across really diverse backgrounds um, because there's a lot of folks here that um, you know, I've never taken a computer science class in my life, and there are people who have PhDs in computer science. Um, a lot of folks dealing with games, and, and I'm not someone who deals with games, but I see such a rich conversation coming out of that. And so I think for me the, the dynamic was this component of starting with the participants, the research participants, so the, the young scholar or new scholars, young is such a strange word, but uh, starting from there and then having that sort of energy sort of pull in resources that were around us. And there, are, there were rich resources presented to us at um, the universities that we visited, the scholars, certainly the senior scholars, and these, these prominent figures that we had access to in a pretty intimate setting. But I felt like the, the sort of golden opportunity was it, at each stage, it started with us. It started with the dialogue and the conversations that we were steering throughout the week from our work, from our concerns, from our different areas. And then trying to involve these sort of more experienced scholars or more developed spaces in the concerns and dialogue that, that we were sort of really, really engaged with. And I think that I've been in situations where it's just the opposite. You know, you kind of, you're invited to have this sort of dialogic experience and what it turns into be is sort of like, you know, kind of a promotional aspect to where you're being, you're being exposed to what somebody else is doing and there's really no rich dialogue there. So, and I think that that, 
that is the number one thing that I'm walking away with. It's just um, there's 11 other people now that I know that are in various stages of beginning a career um, doing really diverse work, but that I feel like I can, uh, there's a collaborative outlet there. Um, and also kind of a, um, a support network in ways. Again, I, I want to start with my, the cohort here and, and hearing them present their work and, and the passion that comes across. Really exciting for me because I'm somebody who's really just passionate about what I do. Um, and it's hard to find people who are also passionate about such a niche sort of area of focus. Um, and also sometimes, you know, sort of the larger conversations about digital media or gaming, certainly. I know in my field, art education, just continually finding sort of the larger public conversation, kind of really, um, you know, slighting what we do or overlooking it or seeing it as sort of unimportant. And so feeling, feeling like there's a group of people that, yeah, you know, you're really jazzed about what you're doing and very passionate and it's really important for you. And that, that gives me energy. I think, too, seeing some of the, um, yesterday at the, we went to the Institute for Multimedia Literacies at USC, and, you know, those places are open to a certain extent to people visiting, but it's hard, you know, I'm on the East Coast, it's hard for me to just come out and visit, um, and so having access to some of that, that was one of the institutes where I thought, like, wow, I could really be at home here. Just some of the programming, some of the things that their um, PhD students or people involved in the Institute are doing. I just find really, really exciting, uh, and I want to kind of take that back um, as a sort of exemplar of, of some of the dynamic, interesting things that are happening in, in what I see as a crossover between um, sort of broadly defined arts practices and then this area of sort of high uh, technological expertise, and so there's a really nice, rich intersection there, especially at that institute that I'm really interested in bringing back with me and um, looking for other spaces that I can find in my area that, that does that and, and see how connecting those two things might might benefit both. I was I, I was lucky enough to just sort of stumble upon the original DML conference two years ago and sort of went and thought like wow this is a really interesting space and so I was immediately interested in being more involved um, and I had a, um, so a, a guy who's in art education who was also at that initial conference who I hadn't known who I met through the conference so it was sort of the strange like oh you're in art ed as well and I hadn't really met him before and so we began sort of an informal uh, relationship and he just sent me an email and said hey have you seen this you know are you aware of this and I, I sort of put it together thinking like there's no way <laughs> like there's no way I'm going to be able to you know because I just don't I felt like in some ways I, I'm not techy enough or something um, but we, we had, a, at this past year's DML conference, we had a breakfast session. We were all talking, kind of introducing ourselves. And it sort of really made sense to me. Part of the reason I was chosen was for the diversity of my background and for the, for the different conversation that I'm presenting. Um, because each person had such a like, different little pocket. Um, but then it, this sort of, that contributed to this larger conversation I think that DML is really trying to, trying to catalyze in a way. So... Um, yeah, so that was that. I was just really sort of honored to be to be chosen, but also um, I saw it as being a really conscious effort to bring together a diverse conversation. And I think that's a really important direction for the DML to take is to continue to try and invite um, a broader conversation about what digital mean, meaning and learning can can be. So.